What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Nicey Chunga Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King. What's good, everybody? And you're listening to the Ball Fake Podcast. If you're new to our channel and you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe, turn on post notifications, leave something for us in the comment section. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, make sure to give us a nice little review on there as well. We'll respond back to y'all's comments and y'all's feedback on either platform. It doesn't matter. But before we start today's video, I just want to give a quick shout out to our subscriber of the day. Shout out our boy G Blades. Appreciate you liking and subscribing and watching all of our videos. And we're going to hop right into the video. Now, as you can see, Jello Ball, he went undrafted last night in the NBA G League draft. Uh, this is kind of notable news just because, you know, Jello, he's got a pretty big name. Uh, he hasn't played in a few years. You know, it's been three years to be exact. Uh, he hasn't played since November 18th of, I believe, what, 2018, something like that. But I think, well, another thing, too, that a lot of people don't know is that there's only 17 teams heading into the G League bubble. So they're going to they are they don't have they're not going to have every team. So that lessens his chances of getting drafted, even though I still believe he's good enough to get drafted. But I mean, those G League teams obviously didn't think so. But he wasn't the only notable name to go undrafted last night. You know, it was guys like Lance Stevenson, Mario Chalmers, even Malik Beasley. Those are NBA veterans. You know, they have notable names for themselves as well. Uh, they went undrafted and for some reason. I'm not sure why, but I think honestly, the only the only option for Jello right now is to take the overseas route. You know, um, he can he can play for the Australian league that LaMelo played in the NBL, uh, possibly play on that Illawarra Hawks team that he played for. Uh, they were able to get LaMelo drafted to the number three spot. So I think, and on top of that, you already have ties with that organization just because like your little brother played for them as well. But I mean, Greg, what are your thoughts on uh, Jello's next moves and everything and your yeah, reaction to this? Yeah, I totally agree with you. I think that he should go overseas. I think that's his next route. I mean, he definitely does need some film. And he just needs to prove to prove to these scouts that he's, he's he's he wants to be committed. He's committed to the process. I mean, we don't want to keep seeing you know twenty four seven fitness workouts posted on Instagram. Like it's time to get get back to organization basketball and show that you belong belong on the NBA roster and the G League roster. And I really think he can do it. He has the talent to do it. He just has to show them that I'm ready to do this. But my my concerns is someone needs to give him direction like you know how Lamelo had direction with jj jackson right and they need jello needs a guy like that that, that helped Lamelo's development a lot once he went to spire and found jj uh Lamelo blossomed to a a whole different person off the court and on the court so but i think get somebody like that, real quick i think yeah. i think the difference though a lot of people they're not realizing this Lamelo ball he's a he's a you could start make an argument that he's a generational talent yeah. versus jello ball he's kind of you know like i said like he's he's very lethargic he, he outside of shooting what else does he bring to the table he's not very athletic it, there's going to be questions on the defensive end of the basketball there's a lot of things that play into you know what i'm saying him not getting into the nba and the g league and all that and on top of that like i said there's 17 teams that uh were drafted that that were drafting players last night but they're only having rosters of 10 people on there so that that really slims his chances of you know getting an opportunity to play basketball and, and then yeah. ankle injuries and stuff like that that's also a big concern but i mean yeah yeah that's what i'm saying that's why i think he needs a guy like a jj who's really just gonna sit down with him and really train him and get get him you know to to hone in on those those development skills that need to be on the court and off the court to make him a full you know good nba player the door g league player if that's what he is but that's his next step like get with somebody especially signing with uh an agency like rock nation if nobody knows who that is that's jay-z's eight sports agency so they're recognizable get get with people there find a, find somebody who can really just focus on you focus on your development to be and this next chapter of your life, which will looks like it's going to be overseas. So, right. Because I mean, he can't, he cannot afford another year without playing basketball. Yeah. If he goes another, that's what I was about to bring up too. If he goes another year without playing organized basketball, or we will not be seeing Leangelo ball in the media as much as we've been seeing this past year. Right. And I mean, like I said, there's, there's, there's already so many concerns with his health and everything. I mean, he's, he's been a guy who's been injury prone since high school. You know, he, he had uh, back in high school he had ankle injuries as well uh that translated to the jba league um 
after after he was you know suspended from ucla he also had another ankle injury and then it also you know what i'm saying we a couple weeks ago he had one with the detroit pistons so i mean it's just it's been a reoccurring you know what i'm think same thing with the angela ball and i just think like i feel like he's gotten a lot more chances than what people really think you know what i mean like, oh, most death. so i mean like yeah i mean he has to be available you know what i mean and then on top of that like i said you don't have you, he doesn't necessarily have eye popping talent do i think he's somebody who can help a basketball team yes most certainly but i mean if these gms and everybody don't see it you know we can't be mad at them for that you know what i mean like a lot of people are putting all this pressure and stuff on jello but if he just isn't cut out for this and then he he just isn't you know what i mean and i think it, it's it's really tough to say but i mean sometimes you got to get hit with a reality check and i think this is reality check after the third time getting rejected right but i think like i said the overseas route that is his last option man it really is if he cannot go overseas and play in a respectable association like the you know uh nbl or somewhere like that yeah, but I, somewhere I don't think any not in, i don't think any euro uh teams want him or anything like that because i i think i saw i'm not sure if this um it's accurate information, but I saw that there was a lot of, you know what I'm saying, Euro teams that weren't necessarily interested in having him play on their roster and everything. And I can't necessarily blame him because I don't think he, his style of play really matches up with most of those teams anyway. Because I watch a lot of film on, uh, you know, these other European leagues and stuff. I don't just keep it basic with the NBA and college basketball. I really do my research. But yeah, I mean, I think if he's able to, you know what I'm saying, produce on whatever team he plays for next overseas, he could possibly get into the G League, which I think he ha has a pretty good chance of doing so, unless he just goes out overseas and just lays an egg. Yeah. And then that could also translate to, you know, you you never know, a 10-day contract or something like that. And then, boom, he could possibly on an be on an NBA roster if he performs well within that uh, certain period of time. But, I mean, it's just a guessing game with uh, LiAngelo Ball, man. But, I mean, what, do you have any final comments on, you know, what he should do and things of that nature? Yeah. No, you hit it right on the head. Just, you know, go out there, perform, do do you, and continue to get better every time you're on the court and make sure your film's good and when you when you get when you get that opportunity, make sure, play like it's your last. Play like it's your last opportunity because it's been 3 years, so you got to play like it's your last and just show everybody that you you are you are LeAngelo Ball. You're not you're not Lonzo, you're not LaMelo. You're your own person and show that you can you belong here. So I think he has a bright future, but he's got to get it together and figure out what he wants to do with his life. Right. I agree 100 percent. But I think that's all we have for you guys today. Uh, we really appreciate you guys tuning into another episode. With us. a quick little breaking news update. Uh, episode 22 is now in the books. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe. Turn on post notifications if you're new. Uh, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, also give us a nice little review. And once again, shout out to our subscriber of the day, G Blaze. We appreciate you. And outside of that, it's your boy, Nasi Chunga Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King. And we out. We out. <laughs>